Um, but yeah, so one of them goes away, and the other two should stay on the field? Yes! Wonderful. I am happy with that. So, give me one moment. Uh, robot scrap? Okay, so, before, before I go and take some drinks and whatnot here, um, I've noticed, one thing, one of the things I've noticed is that the, um, again, the American version of the game gives everything, like, capital and lowercase letters, whereas this is all capital, but there are some things like Robot Scrap Stage. <laughs> it's just, in the American version, it's called Robot Junkyard. I just think that's hilarious. One moment, please. Okay, so since neither of the X Hunters are currently in Morph Moth stage, which is the next one in the loop, I'm gonna go to uh, Magna Hyaku Legger, Magna Centipede, um, and try my damnedest to get the couple things in here because there's not a lot of margin for error um, when getting these upgrades because they're kind of like. Basically, the thing is. The thing is, I came to this stage too early, because I feel like an idiot now. Um, the thing is, I need the speed burner, or the bur the rushing burner, the speed burner, in order to be able to get these things. But the thing is, I don't need the speed burner per se, I need the charged up speed burner, which will basically allow me to do an extra sort of um, air dash. A much longer and faster air dash, if you will. And in order to be able to do to charge up my sub weapons, much like in Mega Man X, I need the X Buster upgrade, which is obtained in Wheel Gator stage. So I actually have to go to Wheel Gator stage first. I just noticed that on the little map screen, the dinosaur tank is destroyed now. Is that just a thing that happens in this game? It wouldn't make much sense if that was a thing, because you can still go on the dinosaur tank. Look, the dinosaur tank is fine. The dinosaur tank is still rolling along. The buildings are destroyed. I don't know if that was just, like, a thing that, that happened when I was first here. It's not really, honestly, something that I paid attention to in the background. But, uh, you know... Either way, we got speed burner, so we can get the two upgrades here. We can get one of the upgrades here. Damn it. Okay. So. Okay, here's the thing. I probably could get across this gap if I had the speed burner charged. But seeing as the, the, th the upgrade up here is the thing that charges the speed burner, or allows me to charge the speed burner. Oh! Oh, the air dash can do! Oh, the air dash can do! Oh! I was so wrong. Okay. Back on track, ladies and gents, and others. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I'll mute that cough or something. Okay, the speed, the air dash. I forgot that was a thing that can do here. Pardon my terrible grammar for the sake of entertainment, but if I can time my air dash, I can go on up there. That Triceratops thing needs to go away. To help me get this thing done. No, the Triceratops tank's just gonna come back. Thanks, Triceratops tank. You're such a big help. I was being sarcastic. All right. Now the easiest way to do this is to have the strike chain, which is um, I almost had it there, which is wire sponges um, uh, weapon, but. I can, if I use the air dash, I can hook on to the, uh, the, the slightly lower wall. There we go. All right, folks. All right, plan A is still a go. Oh. <laughs> 
So we got our X Buster upgrade. We can charge our sub weapons now. So what does this mean for our sub weapons? Well, here's what the X Buster can do in our free demo. It does. Um, it allows us to shoot if we do do fully charged. It allows us to do two charge shots like that, two in a row. That's a pretty cool thing. Um, with the bubble splash, it gives us a, a bubble shield kind of thing. Not really like the rolling shield from the from the uh, past game. Um, I don't really use the the uh, the bubble shield myself that much. But when you're underwater, like say in Bubble Crab stage, uh, it will allow you to like jump super high in water, and will even allow you to jump across water to get at certain upgrades. And that's really all I use the uh, Charge Up Bubble Splash for. Um, I forget what the Charge Up uh, Wheel Gator Spin Wheel does. Let's see what it does. It does a, a an eight-way burst thing. That seems pretty useless. Uh, and the speed burner, whereas, um, like, you know, the, the regular speed burner um, thing, as we saw, uh, shoots a little fire thing forward. Uh, and as I added later, because we didn't see it during the demonstration, does add a little bit of a fire trail to it. Um, the charged up version actually surrounds the user, in this case, X. The only person will ever see use the charge up speed burner. <laughs> um, <laughs> with fire and basically ex do an extended air dash. Uh, this is going to be immensely useful for getting certain power ups, including the heart tank that we're raring to get uh, right the heck now. Um, I'm heading toward the heart tank for Wheel Gator stage, which we really do need the speed burner to get. Now, I don't remember if this game has save states or not, does it? Hold on. Select will tell us. Will the select... Uh, no, we don't. This isn't This isn't Mega Man Legacy Collection. This is Mega Man X Legacy Collection. Alright, so. Here's the skinny. So we're going to charge up the weapon. Not do that. Not do this. Okay. Stop that. I was trying to charge up without using any of the weapon energy, so... That's the risk. We need to air dash up just above those spikes to get up on that ledge and get the heart tank. That's the... Oh, it, it puts us right back here. Wonderful. But that's the, uh, that's the whole skinny on this. Because the thing is, we can use that in conjunction with a normal dash. Or an air dash. So that's going to be the hard part, is getting this heart tank. This is, this is pretty difficult. Or you can just dash right into the spikes. Good one, Patrick. Okay. I should probably just cut out until I get that, because we're going to go through the whole damn stage again to get that. Alright. One moment while I go back into Mr. Alligates' stage and get that heart tank. One moment, please. Okay. Great. A half hour of cursing later, I finally got it. I had to bring the Switch into handheld mode to give myself the reaction ability to do so. I swear, I, I do this kind of thing to prevent myself from going insane, but uh, apparently this, this game had other ideas for this particular challenge, so I'm going to pour myself another shot in celebration of pulling off this frickin' impossible feat. Jesus Christ. Salud. Where? I didn't think that, like, booze in general was going to affect me this much when it came to reaction time and shit like that. 
But when all is said and done, there wasn't anything differently that I was doing. And it wasn't until I put it into frickin' handheld mode that I was able to pull it off, so... It just shows how much of a, uh, a handheld gamer I am compared to, you know, not handheld and, um, you know... Doesn't help that the, the neighbors are going out, sh shooting off fireworks and shit. Scaring, scaring my roommate's dog. And, um, my roommate's not home currently. So I had to move my baby gate from the doorway into, into the pat cave to the bottom of the stairs. So she wouldn't come upstairs. And that is this bottle, bottle of Kraken done. But my uh, my brother and his fiance actually gave me another another bottle of Kraken for Christmas. So if need be, I can break into that and continue my my rum and coke fiesta here. Okay, but that is quite possibly the hardest the hardest power up to get in the game. And from here on out. Hopefully I'm not cursing myself by saying this is going to be smooth sailing. So I'm going to go to Bubbly Crablos' stage. And, uh... Again, interchangeable. American, Japanese names. I'm going to pick up the heart tank and the sub tank. In this level. Because now that we have the X-Buster... Up upgrade. We can... Use the charged up uh, bubble splash to get the power-ups we need, which is fantastic. I'm also almost out of, uh, out of bourbon, which is not something that normally happens all that often. Um, but I do not, unfortunately, I do not have another bottle of that, so I have maybe enough for another half shot. I'll make, I'll make sure to fit, to polish that off in the course of, in the, uh, the course of tonight's events. Just so I'm not left with like an empty bird, oh, an empty bottle of bourbon or some shit like that. Now, like I said, the charged up bubble shield thing will allow me to skip across the water and also jump super high while I'm in the water. And as you can see, there is some open water to the left of me, and I can only really access that with the charged up bubble splash. So let us do Badoom. Hold on. Let's do this properly. Let's see if we can at least latch on to the, the side of this elevator thing. Yeah, there's the heart tank. So I'm going to shut this off so that it doesn't, like, waste all of its energy in one use. And we're going to head over to where abouts the sub-tank is. And the sub-tank should be... About here. I'd say about about here. Yeah, this is a, a good estimate of about about where it is. Yeah, that actually there there it is. There is the self same sub tank, and we are going to use just kind of hop across the water to get at it. And boom, that's all of the uh, upgrades in uh, Bubble Crab stage. I'm feeling better already. <sighs> After a half hour of, of rage, which I am thankfully not keeping in the video, um, some r decent rapid progress is a good sign. And while we're at it, I do know that there is an X Hunter here, but I don't know. Now nah, it's not going to be really. I don't think it's going to be worth it to go after the X Hunter himself. I'm just going to get the uh, the upgrades in this stage, which are fairly straightforward and fairly close to the beginning of the level. Now the trick is, as we've seen, there's like these these little searchlights that will activate alarms. And 
while overall I want to avoid activation of set alarms, I don't think it's really 100% necessary, but it can be problematic once we get to the point where we need to be if those alarms are active. Especially with these fucking shield guys, Jesus Christ. Well... See, when we're behind this kind of wall thing, we're immune to the alarms. Alright. So, now that we have bypassed the alarms, <laughs> we can get up to this dude here. Because this is where one of our... Actually, if we activate our speed burner boost... We activate our speed burner, burner boost correctly. I said correctly. Look, I wasted all of my rage on that one power up. I don't have the time or rage to quit again. Alright, that's the heart tank. And then we've got the sub tank to do. So. this kind of um block tomfoolery we gotta deal with. Alright. I'm willing to take that, that game over there. That's fine. That's that's A-OK -okay with me. That's fine. Okay. I'm more willing at this point to accept that death. Not triggering any alarms, because the alarms um don't actually have a direct effect. It's just the movement of the blocks, really, as to whether or not we can get the sub tank. Because the sub tank is a much bigger pain in the butt to get than the heart tank is. Because I mean, that that heart tank, what that just took like a couple of tries with the speed burner boost. The other one, the uh, sub tank, does require a speed burner boost, but it also requires, you know, much much like the uh, the heart tank in, in, in Wheel Gator stage, it does require a lot of pixel-perfect timing on the jumps, but not to a deadly extent. It's much more to a, uh, if you fuck up this jump, you fuck up getting the thing extent. Um, the, the thing I really need to be careful of is just not to fuck up knowing where it is. Because the thing is, I'm so used to doing this with frickin' save states. And I have and I have done this kind of thing without save states before. I think it's... No, it's not there. Oh, that was a pit. Okay, that was my fault. That was 100% me. I thought maybe... I, I was thinking for... Just, you know, a split second there. Oh, maybe this hallway actually goes downward. It does not. It just goes straight forward. That is a pit. That is me being a dumb. I am more than willing to admit when something is my fault. <laughs> the rage in, uh, in Wheel Gator stage, which I thankfully kept out. Or, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a thing where I... I just like include every every attempt to fucking speed burner speed burner dash that fucking thing. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I'm probably just gonna keep it all out because I'm embarrassed by my own rage. My own nerd rage. Nerd rage is a thing. Nerd range, it can... It is da it's a dangerous thing. Warn the ones you love. I don't know. I don't know where I was even going with that. Okay. Oh. Okay. So the good news is... The good news is... I don't really need a block or anything. 
bad news is the part I need is up there. It's up this little thing. I need to hook onto that slightly lower wall with a speed burner boost. And that is easier said than done. Easier said than done, albeit a bit easier to pull off than that heart tank in Wheel Gator stage. And with, um, I would say, not so deadly consequences. So let's hope I can do this, okay? Oh, first try, good. Good to do, good to go, good to know. Yes, we're good. Now I'm just gonna kill myself off. Okay. So, hard stuff to get in the game besides the zero parts, because I do consider the uh, I do consider the X hunters to be pretty pretty darn hard if I do say so myself. But as far as power ups go, hard tank and wheel gator stage, sub tank in in uh, in magma centipede stage, and um, the heart tank in overdrive ostrich stage. All those are got. All those are done. We're good to go. Um. So we pretty much have everything we can get up to this point. Now we just need for there to be... There is... Okay, at the very least, there is an X-Hunter we can easily get to in, uh, in Overdrive Ostrich's stage here. It's at the very beginning of the stage. I think it's Surges. So I think we can easily take care of him. I'm not gonna... I know I'm not gonna be able to 100% be able to beat Overdrive Ostrich himself. But at the very least, if we can get rid of the X-Hunter, that'll be a big boost for us. Because like I said, we, we have to, you know, we, 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 would, we would need to sooner beat an X-Hunter before we beat a Maverick. I mean, if we beat a Maverick before we beat an X-Hunter, then that's, that's bad news. But if as long as we can beat an X-Hunter before we beat a Maverick, we should be okay. And Surges, as far as I can remember, is has been fairly easy the last couple times I've fought him. But now, now that I'm drunk, I'm not so sure. Because I'm just... My, my fat... My fat thumb fingers are just... fucking everything up. I mean, let's face it, the, the, the harder of the, the uh, X-Hunters to beat the first time around is Agile. And we already got him done down pat. I think Violin is probably the easiest of the, of the three. Surges can be, can be a pain, but once you know what he's doing and what he tries to do... Try not to step on his mind. Take care of the mines if you can. But he's mainly just like jumping in the air and laying mines. So he's really not too big a deal. I think it's mainly when... Because we, we, we fight these guys again in their own like Sigma Palace or whatever. But, um... So we, we got him. We, we got him now. So that's... I just kind of skipped over what they, what they called the parts. Probably zero head parts, but I think it's like zero parts number one as far as the uh, the game itself is concerned. So let's go ahead and launch ourselves into some spikes so we can go to wherever Violin is and get rid of him. I'm sure there's some spikes around here. Yeah, there's some spikes right there. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. And we end up right in front of the self-same spikes. That's going to make exiting this level fairly easy, because we haven't beaten the boss yet. In fact, I'm fairly sure this is the uh, the first boss that we got to by accident, and then had to actually kill ourselves on the boss. I'm fairly sure that is accurate. That is an accurate thing that happened. Awesome. So we only got Violin left, and Violin is probably the most... 
Okay, I wouldn't say he's the easiest, but he is the most straightforward of any of these guys. He's in Crystal Snail stage, and I don't quite know how to get to him through Crystal Snail stage. I think it has to do with toting along the ride armor that can bust through shit and get up to where he is. I mean, if all else if all else fails, I can always just like fail the stage. Oh, see, I can't even bring the. Yeah. I'm... Okay. So I think that there's like a way that you can get something else to destroy that for you or something. I know there's a way that you can. I've seen Jordan do this like several times. Down there is the heart tank. We can't get that without the strike chain. Well, damn. May as well kill ourselves now at this point. Jesus Christ. Okay. If I can't figure out how to bring the uh, the freaking ride armor with me to the place where we need to go, then I will call Crystal Snail Stage a wash and just... Yeah. I don't know how to bring this out, so I'm going to kill myself to get out of this stage and warp Violin somewhere else where I can get at him. This is ridiculous. Where's he gonna go? Overdrive Ostrich's stage. At the very least, I know where that is, so I'm good with that. I swear to you, though, once we're done with Violin, we're just gonna go through the rest of the game like frickin' normal. Possibly try to go for the Shoryuken. Uh, much like how the Hadouken was a thing in uh, in Mega Man X1. Uh, the Shoryuken is a thing in Mega Man X2. Um, and I have not beaten the game without the Shoryuken. But the Shoryuken... I don't know if I would say it's incredibly hard to get. Okay, it is hard to get. It is very hard to get to in the manner that you're supposed to do. I don't know how how hard I would say it is compared to the heart tank and frickin' wheel gator stage. Plus violin. I just I just noticed how the katakana spelled his name. I don't care. I just been calling him violin all my life, so I don't care. He is the most straightforward because he has this chain ball thing. And he shoots down, and that's it. This this guy is just like a war of attrition, pretty much. Just do as much damage as you can. Heal yourself if and when you can. That's the violin fight. And if you can not get hit by the, um, by his little chain hammer or whatever, that's great, too. Nope, nope, use the sub-tank, use the sub-tank, please. There we go. I think these guys all have weaknesses, too, but I'm fairly sure all the weaknesses are a magnet mine, which I don't have. <laughs> Either way, we got the one. We're good to go. We got all the zero parts. And... Yep, zero body parts. Awesome. So we are good to go for the good ending of the game. And from here on out, we are going to just go on... I mean, I'm still going to kill myself here because... Again, I'm not good at fighting a lot of these Mavericks without their weaknesses. But, at the very least, um, we've defeated all of the X-Hunters... And we can just go on with the standard uh, weakness progression. So I'm going to kill myself here and then go on to more of Moth stage. And do more of Moth stage for really reels and not just for upgrades. And we're good to go. And we even have like this awesome armor upgrade and all these heart tanks. And it only took me, like, what, 
a little over two hours. I mean, probably more of like an hour and a half to you guys because I took out so much, took out so much footage of me just raging over Wheel Gator stage, but still. All right, so let's go back into the normal weakness loop here. Our optional side bosses are done. So we'll go to Metamorph Minos or Morph Moth. I always thought it was—I always thought it was interesting how all of the um, all of the Mavericks have uh, different names in Japan. Well, not all of them. Uh, starting with um, X6, I believe they uh, they started keeping the Japanese names for the most part. Like, I mean, we've seen all the ones in X7, like uh, Soldier Stone Kong and Vanishing Gungaroo and Ride Borski. And then, like, Mega Man X6 had, like, Metal Shark Player and and Blaze Heatnix and Blizzard Wolfang. And X8 had Bamboo Pandemonium. Actually, I think I think, I think that meant went more toward... Because there were, there were some, like, like, Bamboo Pandemonium. But then there were, like, the standards. There was, like, a lot of the standards of, like, Optic Sunflower and... And, uh... Ground something something trilobite or whatever. Like Mega Man X One had the same sort of thing going on with it. Launch Octopus was Launch Octopardo. Um, Flame Mammoth was um, what was Flame Mammoth? Burning Newmender or No Mender or something. I don't even know. That that's a, that sounds like a weird name. Boomer Quanger was like the only one that kept his name. I think this is Speed Burner, which is his weakness. I'm trying not to use all of my Speed Burner, because I kind of want Speed Burner for North Moth, but... I'm fairly sure it's the weakness for this thing, too. It's kind of like Mega Man 11, where... I'll... In Mega Man 11, all of the mini bosses within any particular level have the same weakness as the uh, as the Robot Master itself. Mega Man 11, not a bad game. Check out Mega Man 11 if you can. Um, I don't think it was as fantastically great as everyone said it was, but it was it was quite entertaining, quite fun. I had a good time with it. Not as used all my speed burner. Oh no. Well, I will replenish my speed burner. Thank you very much. I need speed burner. Speed burner is the weakness of is the weakness of Morph Moth. Oh yeah. All right. Um all right. Other names. So, other other Mega Man X names. Cuz we played the English version of Mega Man X off my Wii U, I believe, because the Switch wasn't a thing last year. That that at that that at that time. So, um, all right. Starting with what ordered? What ordered? It? It's Storm Eagle. Storm Eagle. Yeah, that's his name. Um, Clay Mammoth is Burning Newmander. Um, Chill Penguin was Icy Penguigo. Um, Spark Mandrill was... I think it was just, like, Spark Mandriller or something like that. Um... Armored Armadillo was Armored Armage. Um, Launch Octopus was Launch Octopardo. Uh, Boomer Quanger, they didn't change for some reason. Not to, like, say Boomerang... Boomerang Cockroach or something. Um... Yeah, Boomer Kwanger, Boomer Kwanger was pretty much the same. And then uh, Sting Chameleon was like, just like Sting Chameleon or something like that. So you got... This sort of thing happened until like Mega Man X6, like I said. Um, hell, in Mega Man X5, they even have like two sets of names to go with them, more or less, because... Um, you have, like, in the, origi in the original version of Mega Man X5, they were all given, like, names based off of Guns N' Roses. 
um, like Grizzly Slash and Duff McWhalen and uh, Squid Adler and, and Axel the Red. And then, oddly enough, um, when the uh, Legacy Collection came out, they actually changed all of those. Um, I don't know if it was if it was just the because the thing is, the names that were given in the game were different from the names that were given in the instruction manual, and the um, the Mega Man homepage, MMHP.net, probably like the best resource for Mega Man games out there, um, had come up with some names that were kind of like an in-between, like giving them like the, the animal names again, like, so like, like, uh, Gr Duff McWhale became like Tidal Whale, and stuff like that. I didn't get enough speed booster. Fuck. But the thing is, the Legacy Collection version of X5 use all of the names from the Mega Man homepage. So, like, you got, like, uh, instead of Grizzly Slash, you had Crescent Grizzly. You had Tidal Whale and Volt Kraken and Volt uh, and uh, Shining Firefly. And it was, it was freaking hilarious when I found that out. I mean, I'm one of the few people who didn't mind the Guns N' Roses names, because I kind of like Guns N' Roses, and I thought it was, uh... I mean, they're not my, like, my favorite band or anything. It's like, you know... Favorite band stand... Favorite band... Uh, favorite music band... Rock and roll band... Status goes to, like, Rush, Judas Priest, Foreigner, and Ninja Sex Party. In no particular order besides Rush being number one. But, um... I like Guns N' Roses. I thought the Guns N' Roses names were stupid, but I thought that they were charming at the same time, but still. I still think it was kind of funny that they went with names based off of the ones that were on the uh, Mega Man homepage. So I gotta... I guess I gotta learn how to fight this guy without his weakness, cause... I used his weakness up on that frickin' mini-boss. And I found out later that I didn't need to frickin' do that. Alright, he seems to be easy enough. Yeah, I'm taking some damage, but I also have quite a few heart tanks and the armor upgrades. So I've got to be optimistic. He's already in the second phase, so I think I'm okay. I'm not even halfway through my life yet. Oh man, I'm in like uncharted territory here, folks. I've never fought this guy without his weakness, unless I had like a, a Shoryuken ready to go in like a rematch. I think I got him though. Oh, I got him! <laughs> With one unit of health left to spare, I'll polish off my burden to that. Hell yeah! So that makes like a third of a shot. Farewell, Kentucky Fire. Need to get a new bottle with you. When I get the chance. Scrap shoot? I guess it makes more sense than junk shot. <coughs> oh yeah, that was warm. Okay. So what junk shot or scrap shoot, I guess, normally does. It shoots a little pellet forward, it kind of arcs down into the ground. And then from there kind of like bursts out in four different pieces in diagonals. 
That's basically what it does. Uh, if you do a charged upshot, I believe that it uh, has a big repellent that's supposed in the eight directions. But if you use it, if you charge it up in certain areas, you can actually pull in power ups. Like there's a place in um, Bubble Crab Stage that can get you um, uh, life life up things. Actually, I'm going to do that real quick now that I have this. I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this because this is going to be incredibly useful in the long run. Because I, I, this is how I normally charge up my sub tanks too. So I'm going to go over to a little hidden hidey hole spot in Bubble Crab Stage. Doesn't matter how much damage I take because I'm going to recover it and then some. I don't even have to worry about this guy. This guy can go on and do what he wants. Shoot missiles at me. I don't give a fuck. I just need him to open up this little... This little motherfucker right here. Little gate. Open up gate, please. And then we head into this little nook. Charge it up. That's not what I meant to do. But now, you, see, I can pull in. Look at all of this, all this, these health power-ups. Oh, where did they come from? There's also a similar spot in Crystal Snail Stage that will bring in um, um, weapon energy power-ups. So see, look, at all the sub tanks are all filled up already. I'm never gonna get used to these. I didn't think the weapon names would change, too. Like, I'm, I'm not used to rushing burner and scrap shoot. But whatever. So that's really all, all I use the charged up jump shot for, or scrap shoot. So now we're on to uh, Magna Centipede. Magna, Magna Hyaku Legger. I'm so glad that I turned on the Japanese version for this, because I'm just going to freaking confuse myself. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here. Uh, uh, but no, on, on, in all seriousness, we're pretty much in the... Uh, up until I get to the point where I'm gonna want to get the Shoryuken, we're pretty much in the... Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> I got crushed there. I got crushed there. Other than that, it's pretty much smooth sailing for the rest of the game. Uh, because we've gotten, we've gotten most of the power-ups. Um, uh, what other power-ups do we not have? We have all the power-ups in this level, I know that for sure. Because we've got, they're both in the same hallway and we got both of them. Um... I know we still have to get the, um... We have to get both uh, the uh, heart tank and the helmet upgrade in. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, I didn't know it went on to four. I know what I'm doing. Okay, so Crystal Snail Stage. We've got a heart tank, which we need Strike Chain to get. Strike Chain is going to be from uh, Wire Head Tomorrow. Um, who's going to be the last Maverick we fight, let's be honest. He was the, uh, Strike Chain is the last weapon we're going to be getting from any Maverick. And, um, and the, uh, the helmet upgrade, which we could have gotten by now. But in all honesty, it's fairly useless, so it really doesn't matter that much. I mean, I'm still gonna get it just to get it, but it just points out like, see, like ooh, there's a secret wall here, and um, I know where all the secret walls that matter are. Um, we got everything in Overdrive Ostrich's stage, and we got everything in Wire Sponges. So, like every, the only things we're missing are from uh, Wire Sponges stage. Fair enough, I guess. 
But even then, we're gonna have to, like, go through Wire Sponge's stage once, get the helmet upgrade and beat the boss, and then come back later with the Strike Chain. Once we've beaten Wire Sponge. Uh, to get the, uh, the Heart Tech. And before we go on to... Um, the X-Hunter stages. Because the X-Hunters have their own kind of Sigma... Sigma. How did I get crushed there? How did I get crushed there? Now the game's just trolling me. On freaking Magna Centipede stage. We're maybe... We're, 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 we are exactly halfway through the normal rigmarole with the Mavericks. I mean, yeah. There has been some extra time due to X-Hunter shenanigans. But still. I should not be having this much trouble with this stage. Alright. Let's be more careful. Let's be super duper careful and not kill ourselves by accident. Because once we get past this, this whole section here, like so, uh, the rest of the stage is a cakewalk from what I understand. I mean, there, yeah, there's this whole... There's a mini boss here, but he dies fairly quickly to speed burner. Does he die quickly to speed burner? If I could hit him in the right place, yes. And even if we take a lot of damage, well, that's what we got full full sub tanks for, my friend. That's why we stopped in, in Bubble Crab stage to get full frickin' sub-tanks. That's not a weakness anymore, is it? I don't frickin' know. Is it just, like, not a weakness in the Japanese version? I don't know, what's the... So this, this, this'll fill up with, uh, with blocks. This is why I, I tried not to go for any X-Hunters here, because the X-Hunter gate is actually past all this stuff. I actually kind of want to avoid these, because the next, um... The next mini-boss actually gets stronger with the number of little crosshairs that hit you in that section. Luckily, it's only the one that happened here. But you could get, like, up to three of those things in that section, and, um... If I remember correctly, this this mini boss is not fun. You have to like fight him at full strength. So luckily, I, I I was able to get through quick enough to only get hit by one of those crosshairs. I mean, in an ideal situation, I would have been hit by no crosshairs, but still. And I don't know, this could very well be a thing that, that was changed in the first version. No, that was very fairly easy. So I'm fairly sure I could still get hit by three of those. But that little block falling room, that's where um, the uh, X-Hunter room is. So if you haven't fought the X-Hunter, or if you were going for an X-Hunter in this stage, you would have to go through all that and not get hit too much and basically make your way to the end of that room without too many blocks falling to get in the way of the boss hunter or the X-Hunter gate. And that's a pain in the dick. So let's fight Magna Hyaku Legger here. He's fairly easy. Basically, a majority of his, um, if you hit him with Junk Shot, a majority of his, uh, weapon set gets taken away. Because as you saw, the, um, his tail got destroyed when we hit him with the Junk Shot. And his tail is where his signature magnet mines come Well, okay. There's a thing that he can do with his tail that, from what I understand, uh, what I've seen, because I've I watched Jordan fight this guy without getting rid of his tail. And, like, he was able to, I don't know if he was, like, a sub suck energy out of you or something like that. Either way, 
I am thankful that I was able to get rid of his tail. That's all I'm saying. He can still use his magnet mines, but... I think when he has his tail, he can use his, like, time slowdown... Majigger. I'm using way too much and missing way too much with his weakness. I need to be more careful with this shit, because, um... You don't know what you got till it's gone, and, um... And, uh, Magnus Centipede is one of the harder bosses, if I remember. I mean, yeah, with the junk shot, you can hit him in the, in the four corners, and it's great. But I'm also intoxicated, so... There you go. Therein lies the issue. Alright, I'm gonna wait for him to come down from there. I don't feel comfortable with shooting off the, the junk shot here. I'll be okay. See? I have one shot left. I'm gonna wait until he's back down here. I'm gonna do the smart thing. I can use a sub-tank if need be. I have full sub- I mean, not full sub-tanks, but I do have some sub-tanks that are full. Well, look, look at this. Oh, I'm back at full health now. Fair enough. Scrap shoot. Junk shot. Whatever it's called. This Japanese version is confusing me. I made a poor decision. Not really. And again, it's just an extra little bit of fluff. And I think it's kind of a cool idea that they enabled that in the first place for an option. Like, use the Y button to switch to, like, the Japanese version. And, like, X7 and X8, you can swap between different, um... Uh, languages, like, um... I know X7, at least, has, like, a Spanish version, a German version, and a French version. So if you speak those languages, that's available to you. Alright, so we beat Magna Hyakulegger. Uh, Magnet Mines is good for Crystal Mine Mine. I'm just reading on the screen. So I know I know it's Crystal Snail. Again, interchangeable at this point. And we will, at the very least, make sure to get the helmet upgrade while we're here. As incredibly useless as it is at this point to get said upgrade, I at least want to try and 100% the game. Which is why I'm going to try to get the Shoryuken when we get to it. I'm totally looking forward to that, he lied. Seriously, the Shoryuken... It's another kind of, like, pain-in-the-ass speed burner dash kind of situation. Uh, that is not fun. And will be... would be a lot easier... if I am sober. Who knows, I will, uh, you know, if, if, if push comes to shove, I'll need to bring it into handheld mode again in, in order to, uh, to pull it off. I, I'll be honest, when we, when we got to that wheel gator thing, where I cut for, like, half an hour, I was not expecting that, okay, so, okay, before we get into any other digressions, this is where the helmet upgrade is, it's down here. There it is. Boom. I was not expecting it to be a thing where I would have to pull my Switch out of the dock and play in handheld mode in order to get the thing. And by that point, it was like the third try, maybe. The third of the three lives I was allotted for that particular continue. To get the frickin' heart tank. Just It just goes to show how much better I am at portable gaming than I am with regular... So that, this is this is what the uh, the helmet upgrade does. Is it has this little thing called the eye tracer, and it all it does is point out um, where wherever there's like false walls or ceilings that you can go through. That's all it does. It's it's not even it it, it is less useful than 
Okay, I actually meant to go up the wall there. That was my fault. It is l less useful than, I mean, in the, in the first X game, at the very least, it could, like, break through ceilings by headbutting certain blocks. No, this just... Oh, this is just like... This is this starts a trend of, um... Oh, yeah, here's where a... Here's where an item might be. And it does the same sort of thing in X3, where it's just like... It shows you a map of where the secrets are, which is a little bit more useful than in this game, but still fairly useless. It's not until, like, X4 where we start seeing, like, helmet upgrades that are super useful. Like, in, in, in X4, the helmet upgrade is incredibly useful because it allows you to use sub-weapons um, without energy as long as they're uncharged. Like, if you use, like, charged weapons, like, they'll still use energy. Like, the same amount of energy that they would use, I get crushed. Normally, like... Okay, so let me put it this way. Let's say you have a weapon that uses a certain amount of energy if you use it normally, and then like four times as much if you use it charged. Um, in Mega Man X4, if you have the, uh, the the helmet upgrade, if you use a sub a, a sub weapon normally or a uh, a special weapon, a Maverick weapon normally. It will be free if you use it regularly, but it'll still, like, cost the same amount of energy if you use it while it's charged. So it'll still be, like, the four times amount, but you can use it uncharged as much as you freaking want. It's, it's, it's amazing! And when it, when it comes to, like, X5 and onward... I mean, X, X8 is kind, of a, is kind of a weird situation where you can... Frick. That was my fault again. X8 is a situation where you can get individual armor parts and, like, and, and equip them to, like, a special armor and then, like, use their ability. Because you have, like, two sets of armors. Starting with X5, you have two armors. That, uh, like, two special armors that you can get. Three armors. Hold on. X5 and X6. Okay. X4. Okay. Alright. So, X1... X1 through X3 each have okay uh, the more I think about how to how to word this the more complicated it gets so X1 and X, X2 you have like the one armor the one set of armor upgrades that you can get great awesome in X3 you have like an ex like like a whole set of armor upgrades that you can get, but you also have a set of further upgrades that you can get for that armor. And if you don't get any of them, you have a special capsule which you can get near the end, which will give you all the uh, which will give you all the further upgrades, the golden armor and stuff. Great. Okay. X4, you have a full armor upgrade, but you have two sets of X Buster upgrades that you can swap between. And they're both available right next to each other in the same stage. X5 and X6, you have two armors. Two full armors, but you can only use them if you collect the full armor set. This carries on to X6. X7, as we've seen, you only have one full armor upgrade. X8 kind of goes for combination, where you can get two full sets of armor, but you can equip parts as you want. So you can either have one full set of armor, the other full set of armor, or a combination if you want. X8 is the most versatile is what I'm saying, but still, kind of a nice evolution of things to go along. Here's Crystal Snail, he's a pain in the ass. <sighs> okay. Something I forgot to m mention about Magnet Mines. I don't know what their charge-up does. This is the longest I've been able to chain him along so far. Okay, so the thing with, with uh, Crystal Snail is he can slow down time if he does this.
And, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Then he can charge around his stick. While he's in his shell, he's pretty much invincible. Even to his weakness. At least while he's, like, exposed, you have the ability to target him multiple times with his weakness. But, um... I'm not extraordinarily good at that. Though, that, that time at the beginning of this particular fight where I got him like three times in a row, that's never happened with me before. So I'm going to try to do this. There. That's less of a pain in the ass fight with Christy Snell than I've ever had. Let me tell you. Boy, they. I think next is Overdrive Ostrich, or Sonic Ostrig, as we've seen. Let's see if Crystal Hunter has enough. Oh, Crystal Hunter! We have Crystal Hunter now! That means we can get the, um... We can get the Heart Tank in Morph Moth stage. Let's do that real quick, shall we? I forgot to save. That's okay, though. 